Hey, folks, my guest today is Joe Keeley. He's a CEO and co-founder of Justify Technologies, which exists to accelerate the potential of vertical SaaS platforms with specialized payment infrastructure strategy and beyond, uh, uh, and beyond payment fintech products. The company was founded in 2021 uh, after the team founded multiple venture-backed uh, and had multiple venture-backed SaaS exits. Investors in Justify include Emergence, Crosslink, and Rally. Joe, you ready to take us to the top? Very good. Thanks so much. All right. So you're talking payments infrastructure. Are we talking Stripe, Paddle, Chargebee sort of space or something different? Yeah, that's right. I think if you think about us as like a Stripe custom connect with for vertical SaaS platforms where they don't have to uh, build all this, all this stuff on top of it to get the best economics. So we came from a vertical SaaS background, took us a decade and a half to really get to what we would say sort of world class. And we said, well, you know, and, and thus the name, uh, we said, well, that's a, that was a great ending, but that was really complicated and that was really expensive and maybe that's not right. So let's build what we wish we had. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how you describe it, sort of a virtual FinDeck department, sort of turn it on or off, almost like rack based and managed servers, right? Turn on the team on or off. Is that sort of how you're thinking about this long-term? There's a service component, there's a SaaS component, there's maybe a percentage GMV component. That's right. So we have, uh, you know, payment infrastructure for vertical SaaS that allows them to monetize payments. And very quickly, you're seeing that become, frankly, not that unique. There are a number of folks that are out there to do that. The cat's out of the bag if you're a vertical SaaS platform or marketplace that you ought to monetize payments. But there, and, and you need to have the infrastructure to do that. And we have that. And we have some very interesting, I think, product features that make us different. What I think is, is, Really, the next phase, though, is going beyond payments, and we can talk a little bit more about that and bringing in lending and card issuing and insurance. But back to the service side of it is there's a big difference between doing something and doing something extraordinarily well. So when I think about you know monetizing payments for a vertical SaaS platform, you can have all the infrastructure you want, but if 23% of your barber shops on your barber shop SaaS platform are using your payments, well, one could say you're not really meeting your full potential. So what you might need isn't actually, you know, a remarkable amount of new technology. You might have the stack you need, but what you need is sales enablement training. So, you know, sometimes I think that, you know, and we have a platform that delivers that content and our, our virtual fintech team can, can lean in, but we, we think that it takes more than just an API. You have to have a really good API, but I think putting a, a team around things to achieve the goals, we, we shouldn't forget that it takes a lot of uh, a, a lot of talent as well to win. So we kind of model ourselves a little bit after uh, the playbook. We're a Minneapolis St. Paul based company. There's another one called Arctic Wolf here that does um, chief security officer, you know, and there's a lot of support that they offer that are, you know, powered by humans. And I think we shouldn't forget the power of, you know, humans plus tech. Of course. Now, I mean, uh, you're, you're riding a bit of a wave, which is over the past year and a half. SaaS founders know if the closer they are to the transaction, the more likely there is to, for them to unlock sort of fintech revenue, right? A percent of GMV. And if they go out to the markets, you know, we're talking three months ago, and the board deck sounds more like fintech plus percent of GMV valuations were higher. Uh, it's a sexier, it's, there's more lock in, you're closer to the customers, et cetera. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. 
right? So the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points founder share with us on the show. So traction 1.2 million seed round 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're gonna go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you wanna check this tool out, if you wanna jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here, and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Do you anticipate the desire for folks to move into payments right, with their current customers who already have a SaaS platform? Will that continue as markets sort of compress here and venture dollars are a little more reserved? Well, I think it's, it's going to accelerate because let's say that there are venture dollars are reserved, sure, but that vertical SaaS company, let's say dollars are reserved uh, at this particular period of time for them acquiring new customers even. So then, you know, getting greater value out of and, and uh, you know, wallet share of the customers they do have, that's a big part of embedded payments in fintech. So if you have, you know, 100 million or 10 million of funds flow, how do you better monetize that with not just payments, but other fintech products that you can offer them. Of course, always thinking about how can you add as a vertical platform, you know, value to the customer. Lending is a great example. You know, a lot of times with these small, medium-sized businesses, you know, very quick hit lending, embedded lending products are um, you're competing against them using their credit card, which really, you know, as long as the UI and the UX is 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 good. You shouldn't have that shouldn't be very difficult from a rate standpoint. So we like to think about let's get payments right and 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 then use that underwriting and and all of that and, and take take someone beyond because it's going to uh, at the end of the day even if pre money gets compressed and other things it's going to be a, a vertical SaaS platform is going to be judged on you know the stickiness of their customer and how deep they can go with those customers. So guys, just to make sure you're following along here with Joe and I, because I'm about to ask way more technical questions. If you're running a SaaS company right now and you're selling to construction workers or construction companies, and they you know, have to send invoices to buy lumber, right? And you add up all the potential lumber invoices, and it's a million a month, Joe's going, you should use Justify and add a payments process here. Maybe you're advancing invoices, there's a lending play, maybe you're doing something here. And Joe, they can use your technology to do that. That's right. Our technology and, right. and equally important, our team to help unlock what are the other opportunities. Because you know, we have a toolbox, just you know, using the construction analogy here, we have a toolbox full of tools, and not every tool is you know gonna work for every every job. So, but mm -hmm. but there's oftentimes, you know, a you know, we think that one on their funds flow. So that's all of the money that's flowing through the ecosystem. We believe wholeheartedly after being vertical SaaS veterans ourselves that the platform is creating the value. So they ought to share in the lion's share of that value that's created. So that means, you know, 100 basis points in, pay in payments and another 100 basis points in other products, which, you know, you take Do you take time. your cut out of that first 100 basis points? No, we we are operating on a on a very different model in so much as, you know, we think that, you know, there might be 225 or 250 and so our goal is to first try to make uh get the platform those 200 basis points plus. And then if we can make you know, 5 or 10 or 20 basis points in addition to that as being that true deep partner, you know, the great thing of course about 
vertical SaaS platforms and software sort of eating the world is that very quickly a small platform can see funds flow of 50 to $200 million. Yeah. Yeah. We and, see this all the time well, when, we SaaS, when we interview SaaS founders. Uh, it makes tons of sense. But just to be clear, I'm trying to break down your model, excluding some of the services that you sell, which I do think are important for this. Your sort of like percentage GMV model, the way you make money is you're, yeah, you're going to help the founder get 200 points and then you're going to keep five to 20 points yourself. On top of that, that's right. Amazing. Yep. Okay. So help me understand, you know, it's where you find folks that have gone through VC saying services are really important. I think it's really important when you look at cohort analysis in terms of net dollar retention on folks that have done and paid you for services, it's always higher, almost always higher than folks that don't pay that setup fee or don't pay the service fee as well. So how are you embedding services? Uh, and is it on the front end or the back end of them installing uh, Justify in the first place? You know, there's nothing to in, install it. It's it's more on a modular basis. So we we have insights dashboards. So think about insights is a scoreboard. If you're in the vertical SaaS business, your game is payments and embedded fintech. So if you're going to play a game, we think it's particularly important to keep score at the game. So we've created one pane of glass for executives to say, how are we doing in the payments game? So that's that they can purchase that. And then we have Engage, which is if you're in a game, it's good to have coaches. It's good to have folks that help you sharpen the sword. So Engage is our virtual fintech team where we have an LMS platform and a team that, that they can purchase. And then we have our usage base, you know, tech platform with the sub account architecture. So um, we have some very large platforms that are just purchasing insights and Engage right now because on their roadmap, it's not the time to do a migration. And that's what you okay. call your dashboard insights. That's the name of the product. That's right. Yep. Okay. 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 So just to be clear again, five to 20 points on the first product insights is a dashboard to see how you're doing. Is that like a SaaS fee? Yep, exactly. And then engage is your LMS tool. That's your FinTech. That's your coaching. That's right. Super smart. Okay. Now did the origin story of the company, do you start off with one of these things or do you just launch with all three at the same time? <laughs> so if we go way back, I mean, my background is I grew a, uh, you know, it started as a service company and then we embedded our own vertical SaaS platform and, uh, you know, real-time booking for 15 years in the babysitting and childcare space, actually. <laughs> uh, so we had 10,000 employees in the US and UK and I sold that to Bright Horizons, a public company out of Boston. And then my co-founder, yeah, co-founder started Sports Engine. Sports Engine is a vertical SaaS platform that provided these software tools for youth sports teams. And uh, it turns out that hockey and soccer is really expensive. Uh, Mm Because they processed about $4 billion and they built this sort of this fintech stack and this strategy where 85% of their revenue as a vertical SaaS platform came from what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So we got together and said, um, there must be a a better way than that sort of walk in the desert. And that's why we started Justify to say, you know, something's not right. We started that in January of 21. Okay. So fairly recently, when did you sign up your first vertical software provider on the platform? Uh, about we started building right away. You know, the good news is we we knew exactly what to build because yeah. our engineers been are, there, are, done are, that, been done this for fifteen years. So we brought our first uh, platforms on. You know, in the late summer of twenty, and okay. we're in we're in production with a couple dozen platforms today, and uh, and things are going you know remarkably well. That's great. So call it like 24, 36, 48, something like that. Platforms today actively using the platform. Right. Are you seeing a pattern? Are you having just way more success with the LMS or the insights or the basis point model only? Or are they all using all of them? No, there's a mix and it depends on stage. I think when when a platform's uh, early, you know, there there isn't as much to analyze and help on the cost side. Really, it's and it's easier to embed the you know, the, the processing platform right away. And then what we're often doing is, is really providing a, you know, a discounted part of that strategy because we want to invest in uh, emerging platforms because the catch 22 in the industry, of course, is, well, come talk to us when you, when you have $500 million of volume, it's like, well, well yeah. how, can I, how can I get there if no yeah. one ever sort of helps me accelerate this? So we, we really have a soft place in our heart for there, but, you know, and then larger platforms tend to start, you know, we have, you know, 500 million, a billion dollar platforms. They like to start on the strategy side to, to just really, because there's more, there's more nooks and crannies to dig into. They might have multiple processor integrations. So, but ultimately, you know, to go on this journey, and we do think it's a journey. We think of ourselves a little bit like, you know, payment and fintech Sherpas in a way. We're here to, to develop the map. We're here to carry the load. And um, 
So it, it oftentimes leads to using all of them together because um, the return is so material for a vertical SaaS platform. Mm-hmm. And, and help me understand too, there are people listening right now going, am I too early or too late for Justify? What's the mi- what would you say the minimum amount of potential GMV is for a platform for them to like really consider and making it worth their while to sign up for Justify? Is it 10 million annualized GMV or 100 million or more? Honestly, we have pre-revenue platforms, and if they're the right, pla- if they're a vertical SaaS platform that is convinced that said yes, I would like to monetize payments from dollar one. Oh wow! It's okay, easy, and we would love to work with them. And then we have a platform, a couple platforms that are over a billion that we're working with. So, um, and anywhere in between. So it just really depends on uh, you know we're having different discussions. And there's different analysis for a much larger, more mature, but sometimes very large platforms aren't necessarily, depending on when they were founded and what kind of payment stack they have, they're not necessarily that much more uh, more sophisticated sometimes in in the payments game. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it all depends on on the team. So we, we have really anywhere in between. So, so if we add up all of the GMV that you guys are sitting on, because that's ultimately going to power how good you can build your AI engine, right? And your dashboards and things. Is that above sort of 5 billion at this point? We're, we're flirting with it. Okay. So we're, we're <laughs> this year, it's this still, year. It's still early days, but, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, and I think that the GMV is really interesting because yes, you, you can oftentimes monetize the same funds flow in different ways because a platform can get best of breed at payments that, that come in on the processing side, but then there's opportunities on the payout side. They may, we're doing a, a, a project for one of our platforms that is paying some of their sub account customers out on the card issuing side. So they're making money coming in and they make money coming out too. So we, we're looking at both sides of the coin and, and do take a little bit more of a bespoke approach. Um, we don't feel like we need or necessarily want to work with, you know, thousands of platforms right out of the gate, like just really leaning into, and this notion of taking a team approach to, um, you know, some select few platforms that really want a partner is really where we find um, we deliver and get the most value. You mentioned Joe unlocking at least 200 bips for these platforms when they sign up with you. You know, if you're flirting with 5 billion, let's be conservative and say there's 3 billion right now on the platform. It's fair to say we can multiply times, call it 2%. You've unlocked something like 60 million bucks of potential GM, you know, new revenue for these platforms you're working with, correct? That's right. So it's, you know, it's all about our, we exist to accelerate potential. And I think that done well, and there is again, a very big difference between doing something and doing something well. We, we really have a, a, a lens on the world that says vertical SaaS platforms are literally worth three to five to 10 times more if this strategy is implemented well with the right technology. And that's yeah. why we... I don't, I don't think anyone listening disagrees. I would totally agree with you. Deeper customers, so, bigger wallet share, ARPU expansion, net dollar retention higher, stickiness, all of it. You got it all. You got it. So yeah. um, we exist to accelerate that potential. So let's look at quarters, not years. Yep. Yep. No, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, cool. So um, talk to me about how you guys have funded the business. You bootstrapped or you decided to raise? Um, so we, the CEO and founder of Sports Engine is at Rally Ventures. Mm-hmm. So one of my co-founders. So we, we incubated this inside of Rally Ventures, which has offices in Minneapolis and uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, then we went out for a seed raise and we brought in um, emergence capital in the, in the late summer, fall of last year, and then a fast follow by Crosslink. So this has been um, really predominantly venture backed, um, you know, really from the beginning, uh, we've raised a 10.6 million seed round and, uh, and we're off and running. What was the, oh, sorry, uh, the round you raised last year was 10.6 seed? Correct. And yeah. the round you raised this year was your Series A? And how much was that? No, uh, that was just an extension on the, we, it was a slight. So we did 6.6 and then we added four to it. Um, ah, so got it. The seed. We, we had been talking uh, with the same investors all along and it was just more of a timing, a timing thing as part of the seed race. I so see, I see. We're I looking see. to do a Series A. You know, we, we have... Uh, we have plenty of runway, which is always a good thing, but the timing on it, we'll, we'll see. How many folks are on your team today, full-time? We have about 27 folks on our team today. Wow. And, and 
Yeah. What's the breakdown? How many engineers? A little over half. Yeah. Okay. And then I imagine you probably staff up pretty heavily in your LMS side, right? A bunch of coaches, trainers, tech folks. Yeah, exactly. Um, we, we expect that to, you know, we're, we're still, my, my operational co-founders, our chief payments officer, Casey Kipfer, um, he led the payments team at Sports Engine and then NBC Comcast acquired them. So, uh, you know, he's really leading that team. And um, it, it's an awful lot of fun to lean in with, with other entrepreneurs because, um, you know, even very large, you know, GMV vertical SaaS companies are, you know, can be not so large businesses. And for me personally, and with Casey, it's just, it's terrific to just really lean in and get to know their business and, and, and be more than just providing them with technology, because I think technology enables us as entrepreneurs to do great things, but, but the human part is very real too. Joe, is the onboarding zero or one very black or white? In other words, if someone does a billion in GMV already, do they have to onboard all of that revenue through Justify on day one or they can, can they run a test with a little bit of it to start? Yeah, definitely a test. And we can run alongside existing processors too. So, you know, first and foremost is, you know, the, the migration and, 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 you know, the larger, the more material, uh, certainly a migration might be, but, you know, we're talking, you know, we have a, a $300 million platform that, you know, started integrating and migrating six weeks ago and is in production. Yep. But I want to make sure I understand your model, where you're going here. You know, if you serve your customers well, and you get to the point where you are sitting directly on top of $5 billion of GMV, right? And you've created 200 bips of value for your customers. That's a hundred million bucks of ARR basically unlocked. Your ability to revenue, you know, monetize that is effectively 20 bips on that. So about a $10 million run rate for you once you're sitting on 5 billion of AUL, you know, of GMV. Is that about right? Yeah. And the, the, our, our bips will, will vary and it, it'll depend on the other products that are brought in as well. So, you know, that, that'll be a bit of a journey, but, um, but yeah, it's directionally correct. Very interesting. All right. Anything else I missed before we wrap up? No, been, uh, been great to talk to you. Thanks for, thanks for the invite and, and, uh, look forward to accelerating potential together out there. All right, Joe, famous five year rapid fire stuff. Number one, favorite book. Mm, traction. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, it's- Tim Cook. Number three, is there a favorite online tool you have for building Justify? Mm. Grow. Grow. Yeah, that's a good one. I just acquired recently. I don't know if you know that. I think that's public. Yeah, but just acquired. Uh, <laughs> you heard I, it here first. I hope that's public. Yeah, I think Rob, Rob told me the other day. I'm pretty sure it's public. Um, number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? 7.25. 7.25, the aura ring or something. And I saw a ring on, so I think you're married. Any kids? I do. 16 and 12. Ah, two kiddos. How old are you? 41. All right. Take us home. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Say again? Something you wish you knew back when you were 20. You, you can get it done in eight hours a day. <laughs> guys, you don't have to overwork yourself. Justify sitting on a very interesting opportunity, which is all of you guys have great relationships with your customers already, your SaaS platforms. You sit close to payments. You should launch a GMV model, right? Deeper wallet share, more revenue for you, more value for them. They enable you to do that much faster, much quicker. They're working with call it 24 to 48 platform SaaS companies right now. Their model is to you know take take bips on the value they create for you. Also train you with a with an LMS tool and then also give you dashboards and insights with the SaaS fee if you want them. Take one of them, take all three of them, you pick. But just getting going, they've raised 10 million, 10.6 million bucks to build this bad boy out. Team of 30, uh, sorry, team of 27 right now is Joe Scales. Joe, thanks for taking us to the top. Thanks so much. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, 
a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.